senior senator from Ohio. Madam President, reserving the right to object. Madam President, no, no serious economists across the ideological spectrum are concerned about inflation right now. No one is hiding information at the White House. Uh, I'm in meetings all the time with White House officials talking about this package. No one believed, first of all, no one's hiding information. No one believes what the senator, the, the junior senator from Florida is saying about this. Uh, perhaps some millionaire senators want to make this into an issue, and I hear that over and over and over. But I talk to people like Jay Powell, nominate, chair of the Federal Reserve, nominated by President Trump for that position. Um, he, he, of course, keeps his eye on these kinds of things, but he has expressed no strong concern about inflation. And we even know that when some experts have been concerned, they've been wrong. We saw what happened in 2008 after too many elites worried about inflation. What we really needed was to increase wages and get people back to work. The result from 2008 was a recovery that was too slow for most people, while so many of these big costs continue to rise. Our economy looks a whole lot better today than it did last year, but we can't compare where we are today with where we were last year. We are on the brink of a once in a generation health and economic crisis at this time last year. Millions of people, mostly low wage workers, lost their job. Our economy ground to a halt as we tried to stop the spread of the virus. This year, we've made good progress with the American Rescue Plan, as the presiding officer from Wisconsin knows, getting shots in arms and money in pockets and kids back in school and people back to work. But our recovery is far from over. Just a few, just moments ago, Fed Chair Powell said that we're seeing some temporary upticks because things were so dire last year. We still have a long, but we still have a long way to go. The bigger risk, Madam President, to the economy is not doing enough to raise workers' wages and to invest in the infrastructure that allows our economy to grow. We know corporate leaders, we know millionaire senators, we know people at the top have done very, have in many cases, done very, very well for this, but we know millions of workers, many of them hourly workers, have lost jobs. We know millions of workers, so-called essential workers. One essential worker said to me, works at a grocery store, I don't feel essential. Frankly, I, I feel expendable because they don't pay me much. They don't protect me at work. Those are the people we should be, we should be looking after. I want to raise wages. I want to bring down costs. That's exactly what the jobs plan and the family plan will do. Bring down health care costs. Make child care more affordable. Create more housing people can afford. Bring down energy bills. Make work getting to work cheaper and easier with better transit. These are the costs that have been rising and eating away at family budgets for decades. If my colleague from Florida is so concerned about the cost of living and raising a family, I hope he'll join me to allow Medicare to negotiate directly with drug, drug companies to bring down prices for seniors. I hope he'll join us in investing in child care to bring down the cost of child care. I hope he'll join us as we work to create more housing, bringing down housing costs. I hope he'll join us to raise the minimum wage. My first speech on this floor 14 years ago 14 years ago, my first speech on this floor was to raise the minimum wage, and we did, and it hasn't been raised since. That's what the senator from Florida and the senator from Indiana could help us with, but we know, Madam President, most of the conservative elites in this country, most won't say out loud what this inflation alarmism was really about. They don't want to invest in the American people. They don't want to do anything to make Americans hard work pay off. They'd rather try to scare people, can't spend this money because there might be inflation. They don't want us to do what too many have failed to do, to put money in people's pockets and raise wages and rebuild infrastructure. I'd ask my colleagues to listen to the words of a worker from West Virginia, Pamela Garrison, who testified at our first ever work listening session, our Dignity of Work session in the Banking and Housing Committee yesterday. She said, we're seeing corporations make billions every quarter in profit, but then when we ask for a minimum wage we're told, increase, we're told that no one will raise the cost of stuff. Oh, that'll cost jobs. Funny corporate executives never seem to say they'll have to raise prices when they give themselves bonuses. It's just we'll have to raise prices if we incur the minimum wage. And this um, same Ms. Garrison also said, you know, they call me part of the working poor. The words working and poor shouldn't be in the same sentence. And she's right about that. Real expenses for most families have gone up for decades. 
along with corporate profits in the stock market, executive compensation has exploded upward, and workers' wages haven't kept up. Executive compensation, productivity's up. Executive compensation's up. Profits are up. Workers' wages are flat. That's the problem. That's what we should be working on. Madam President, I object. Objection is heard. Madam President. The junior senator from Florida. Madam President, the decision by my colleague to block this resolution is clearly disappointing. Let's remember what this was about. This was about transparency. They just blocked the Senate from requesting basic information that's going to help all, all Americans. And let's look at these numbers again. Just in the last 12 months, grocery prices are up 2.6 percent, household care is up 5.2 percent, baby care is up 7 percent, general merchandise up 7.1 percent. We're clearly seeing inflation. Senate Democrats have just objected to transparency. That means they're against getting the facts, against ensuring accountability, and against getting the American people the information they need to make smart decisions as prices keep rising. 87 percent of Americans are worried about the rising cost of goods. Apparently, so is the White House. So don't the American people deserve the same information about what is happening with the economy? Floridians deserve to know the truth about inflation, and so do the people, so do the people of Ohio. Why does my colleague want to keep them in the dark? This administration is telling the American people one thing, but saying something else behind closed doors. That's wrong. The American people deserve the truth. Inflation is real. It's happening. It's hurting American families. It's time, it's time President Biden does something about it. And I'm ex extremely disappointed in my colleague, whose action today is helping the President mislead the American people. I yield the floor.